Hello again everyone. Here we are with the front pump. As you can see I've put in my new Teflon bushing as well as my new front seal. And with this 10 vein conversion you have to drill. It ends up being this hole right here. It's a uh, it's a passage and uh, with the increased flow with this pump you run the risk of blowing out the front seal if you don't enlarge this drain back passage to a quarter inch. Same with the uh, other side, the other half of the pump. So now that that's installed and our modifications are done, it's time to start putting in the rest of the pump. One thing I forgot to mention, on these pumps, the surface here, if it's scored up, and it catches your fingernail, you should replace it, or you could probably have it resurfaced, but I'm getting just a little wee tiny bit out of it, but not really much. So what I did was I took some sandpaper and evenly just knocked down some high spots, and it feels good, so I think it'll work out. So now we're going to begin with this little spring. Now this hole here where the pin was, I said it looked like there was a spring and an O-ring earlier. It turns out there's just a small spring, so we're going to put that in so we don't lose it. The next component will be your rotor. I keep calling this thing a housing. I know there's a different name for it, but this. Now on the bottom, you'll have... Uh, let me get the old one out here. I already have this one in. On the, on the bottom, you'll have this metal ring. Let me get this light better. Okay. Sorry about that. So, on the bottom of the housing, you'll have this metal ring, and on top of that, there will be this O ring. So those fit, lube them up with automatic transmission fluid, and it just fits right in the bottom. You can see I already have this one. So O-ring and then metal ring on top. After you have that in there, take your little rubber piece and the plastic piece and fit them in their notch. I'll go ahead and drop this in. Just like that. You want to make sure that this cutout is aligned with the pin cutout the best that you can. Next, what you do is put your pin in, which is why you want to try and keep it lined up as much as possible. And I find that you need to pull back because of this little seal right here. So go ahead and pull this back a little bit until you can fit the pin in. There we go. Okay, next step into securing our guide or housing or whatever this is will be this large blue spring. Now this thing has some pressure to it, so I'm going to try and start it up high on this surface here so that I'm not going in at an angle like that. So we'll see if it even works. It ended up slipping down, but there we go. Okay, our spring's in there. So our guide is securely in place. Next up will be the lower ring. Go ahead and set that in there. Next will be rotor and rotor guide. Now you know which side of the rotor is the bottom because you see these little cutouts, these little uh, square cutouts, 
that's to fit these notches on the rotor guide, the plastic rotor guide here. So, there we go. So fit that in. And just put it in there. It's going to sit in the bore, the same bore as the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as the bushing and seal sits. So now that you have your guide in, next will be your veins. Now to remember to, <clears throat> excuse me, remember to uh, keep everything uh, coated in AT ATF. So we're going to put our veins in. And, uh, one thing I've, one little trick I've learned, if you put them in over here where you don't have a whole lot of room and they don't seat, just put them in over here where you have the larger cavity. See? So then whenever you turn it, it'll push that ring back and it'll kind of center itself. See how that one didn't seat? You want it flat across the top. Last one. There we go. Now, lastly, is our uppermost ring. Just gonna lay that in the middle of all the veins, just like that. And there you have it. That's how you do a ten-vein conversion. So, that's about it for uh, this side of the pump pin was sticking up a little bit there we go so that's about this for the front half of the pump besides our uh, body seal we'll put that on later when we're ready to install it next thing we'll be moving on to is the rear half and what we have to do to that is install our new stator shaft all right I'm going to pause this and we'll be back with the rear half of the pump okay everyone now we're back with this rear half. As you can see, I have the old stator shaft removed. So what we're going to do is just take a look at this. See how there's the three bolt holes? Well, that's for the three Torx head bolts that hold the stator shaft in. Now if you'll notice this, this is a pin that fits through the stator shaft and into this body. But if you can actually look through there, there's this hole, and there's an even tinier hole through it, so it's kind of like an orifice. So you just want to make sure you get that good and clean. So what I'm going to do actually, since there's these little splines on it, I'm actually going to put a tiny little bit of retaining compound on there. Just a small amount. And I'm going to try and get the shaft to go. One thing, it's a good idea, I guess. I did it, and it seems to be good a good idea, I guess. But if you're putting in a new stator shaft, just go ahead, put a little bit of ATF on this bushing in here. Take it over to the input shaft of your transmission and slide it over it. And just feel see how it fits I mean I can bet that you it'll fit good but it, it would be pretty crappy to 
go through all, all this trouble and just to find out that the bushing is oversized or undersized and doesn't fit on the input shaft. So while it's a part, it's a good idea to just check that out real quick. So anyways, this is pretty simple. Just like the pump, you have the three bolt holes and one large hole. That'll be for your pin. So let's go ahead and stick it through. I'm going to move you guys back just a little bit, or maybe just, I can just do this like this. Now I'll move you back. So you can see what the heck I'm doing. That works. Okay, so we're just going to line up our bolt holes. So I can cheese the little bit. I'm just trying to make sure it's as lined up as good as possible before I drive it in. Okay, I think we're going to have to start tapping now. So I'm just going to lay it on the edge of the table and tap. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but it's about the best way I have right now. Okay. So our stator shaft is now seated into our body. Go ahead and just put some screws in. Just to keep it in there. I think these are T27 uh, torque screws or bolts or whatever. Okay, next we're going to take our little splined pin here. We're going to tap that in now. Must be misaligned a little bit. I'm sure that, that sounds pretty hard to the camera, but it's actually not as hard as it sounds, I promise. You get a little punch to drive it in a little more. Not exactly a punch, but it'll work. Okay, so our pin's in. Right there. That's the other side of our pump. And that about does it for uh, this side of the pump. Well, I guess you can torque these, these bolts. I think it's 18 foot-pounds, these three bolts. So go ahead and tighten them down. I'm going to pause the video again, and we're going to line 
those two halves of the pump together. And then we're going to bolt them down. And then that'll be about it for our pump. So, give me a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, I have the two halves made it together. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a couple ways to do that. The first way is if you have a pump alignment band, which is basically, it kind of looks like a oil filter wrench or something, but it basically goes around where these two splits meet. That's well and good, but I don't have one. Now, the next way to do it is to take the pump like how it's sitting upside down and stick it in with the stator shaft facing the tail shaft of the transmission whenever the case, whenever the transmission is completely gutted and you have just the case there. But that wasn't an option for me either because my transmission is still all together and I don't have any plans of tearing it down. So what I've done, and I've done it, I do this kind of stuff at work a lot with uh, turbine casings and things like that. But basically all you do, get your bolts just kind of snug a little bit, and then just feel with your thumbnail on this split. And you can feel like if you take your thumbnail and drag it down, and it catches whenever you're going down, that means that this bottom half is slid this way a bit too far. So you tap it. And same thing if you're going up and you feel a ridge when you're going up but not down. That means that uh, this half, the upper half is slid this way too far. So it just takes a little bit of messing around. I use this just to kind of tap it in place. Why they didn't use dowel pins on the inside, I don't know. Oh boy. Uh, probably just for cost. They probably put this all together and then turned the OD of this pump whenever it was all together. Just then it would be all it's concentric. But anyways, that's how I did it. It's not hard. It's basically just getting a feel for it. And uh, honestly, if... Uh, some people would argue that this this method's not that great, but I got to be honest with you. If you can't feel for a ridge on a split, then what the heck are you doing tearing down a transmission? Honestly, I mean, but that's just my opinion, and that's how I did it. It worked for me. So, anyways, on to the last part of our pump would be the body seal. So it's just this large seal. Now this stripe here, it has to face outward. You want to soak this down in ATF too, so. There you go. It's in place. So there you have it. There's our fully reassembled front pump ready to go back in the transmission. One last thing I might do. I'm not sure if it's these or the 700 R4s. I'll probably end up tearing apart my old one because I think that there's a, a screen that's supposed to be up in here, but it's not. I'll have to tear apart my other 200 to verify, but I'll do that, and then uh, if my other 200 has one, I'll just put it in this one. So that'll be about it. One last bit of information. These bolts here, I believe the uh, torque spec is 18 foot-pounds on them. So just something to note. But anyways, that's about it for a pump. Thanks for watching, and leave a like if it's helped.